We have 13 students, a uh, little bit more detail on 8.1. We're going to talk about the error you might encounter when conducting a test of hypothesis. So come with me over to my other screen, way over there. All right, so 8.1, <clears throat> hypothesis test error. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> The type of error you encounter in a hypothesis test comes in a couple of different flavors. We have the type 1 error. This is set by alpha, <clears throat> and it is the probability <clears throat> of rejecting a true null hypothesis. So we're throwing out the null hypothesis even though it is true. It is the type 1 error. <clears throat> we also have a type 2 error. <clears throat> this type 2 error is set by beta. It's another Greek letter. And this <clears throat> is the probability the probability of failing to reject a false null hypothesis. <clears throat> so we're going to keep a null hypothesis even though it is not true. <clears throat> we cannot minimize both at the same time. More of one less of the other. <clears throat> now, having said that, again, I really want to emphasize this, the type 1 error. <clears throat> That's where we reject a true null hypothesis. The type 2 error is where we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. And in the grand scheme of things, they are truly not considered uh, equivalent. Let's run through an example and we'll see why. All right, so here is a claim. There's a new drug out there. And it cures COVID-19. <clears throat> that certainly would be a useful drug to have right now. So, <clears throat> let's see. The null hypothesis would be that it does not work. And that's usually the way we like to set up our hypothesis test. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis of... <clears throat> the fact that there is really nothing at all going on. We dearly love to reject that null hypothesis because the alternative is that it does indeed work. So <clears throat> let's explore the type of error we might encounter. First off, <clears throat> if H0 is true and we choose to reject H0, this is the type 1 error that is set by alpha. What is the outcome here? <clears throat> it does not work, but we've rejected that and we believe that it does work. <clears throat> so an error has been made. <clears throat> an ineffective drug has been introduced. On the other hand, if we reject the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is indeed false, the test has done a good job. <clears throat> if the null hypothesis is true <clears throat> and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, again, we've done the right thing. <clears throat> the test has uh, come up with the correct result. This last box here is the second type of error. <clears throat> 
Suppose the null hypothesis is false, yet we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This is the beta error. <clears throat> and in truth, it works. So, in both cases, an error has been made. However, they are really, truly not identical. <clears throat> this type of error introduces, <clears throat> introduces a drug that does not work. We get a bad drug. <clears throat> the type 2 error, we think... We think the drug does not work, but indeed it does. So in the type 2 error, we miss a good drug that would help. In the grand scheme of things, we really try to minimize this here. This is really a bad thing to happen. Uh, we can always do more tests and possibly pick up that drug. But if a bad drug gets into the system, it can do a lot of harm. So we really try to minimize alpha, even if we get more beta at the end of the day. It's subtle, but that's the way a hypothesis tests play out. Thank you. Think about error. It's not really about the mistake that you usually encounter. It's about making a wrong decision.